Uh, okay, folks, so the render is finished. It took something about four hours for that 125 frames. Uh, so the next thing you need to know before doing anything is uh, when you want to import your files from uh, Cinema 4D to After Effects, uh, you need to go to your program file Max and Cinema 4D R15 Exchange plugin After Effects. And there is this importer plugin. Uh, you uh, just choose your uh, whether it's Windows or Mac, and uh, then uh, try to define your After Effects version, CCCS or uh, whatever it is, and just uh, copy this plugin to plugins folder in your uh, After Effects application. So this is the first thing. And let's uh, start importing our compositing. Uh, I am not going to be able to explain the basics of After Effects, so uh, hopefully you are familiar with After Effects uh, and let's just start compositing inside After Effects. I'm going to double click in this project folder and uh, where you have saved your file there should be this .aec file uh, if you have saved your project file inside Cinema 4D it gives you this .aec file. Let me double click on this and uh, this will import all of your uh, renders passes and also give you a composition here which uh, contains different lights and cameras and stuff like that. Uh, so let me just delete these two layers. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't give us our main render, so we have to do a bit uh, manual stuff. Let me delete, uh, and also I'm going to delete this light. And our camera is uh, the second camera we worked with. So let me delete this fourth camera. Now let's go to this end, uh, to the end of this layer, and hit N, and uh, right click Trim Comp to Work Area. So uh, this is our composition, and we are ready to actually work with it. Now before adding anything, I'm just going to uh, organize this uh, sequence here and import all of them into this folder and delete this special passes folder. And now we have all of our renders in one. Uh, tidy folder. So let's start by adding our first uh, uh, element which is our main render and I'm going to import it to my composition and this is our render so let's quickly load it uh, to our uh, RAM and see how it looks. Hit zero and let's see what we have got here. <clears throat> So there we go and that's our render very nice and very smooth and you can definitely use it inside After Effects. The first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that uh, I'm working in a 16 bit per channel. Just click on here if it's not 16 bit and change it to uh, 16 bit uh, per channel hour here. Let's hit OK and we are uh, good to start. The first thing I'm going to do is to double uh, select this layer and control D to have a copy and uh, let's go to our effects and add a fast blur. Let's add our the fast blur to this layer and blur it a bit. Make sure repeat edge pixels is selected, and then uh, we can simply change the blending mode by uh, holding down shift and uh, plus sign in your uh, keyboard, and you can go through different blending modes and see which looks nice. I think this, um, let's see, go to this, um, this soft light overlay. I think the overlay is a bit better. Now the next thing, I'm just going to hit T and uh, reduce the opacity uh, to something like 20. So now, as you can see, by adding this layer, we add a lot of contrast to our scene which is really uh, great and uh, okay this is not too bad and the first thing uh, the uh, one important thing that I like to do before doing anything is to try to control the color of this uh, main elements main chord uh, cloner this logo cloner that we had in Cinema 4D let's try to change the uh, color scheme here inside Cinema 4D and see what we can do so for that matter, uh, the next thing I want to do is to add an adjustment layer. So make sure you have your composition selected. Go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And let's uh, just put it down here and uh, name it appropriately. Let's name it CC, which stands for Color Correction. For, let's, 
Uh, there we go. Now I can uh, simply add uh, a hue and saturation effect. So hue saturation and let's add it to this layer. And uh, let's try to change and go through this color wheel. Looks like we change this layer to a 3D layer by mistake anyways. Now as you can see as you change your color wheel it actually changed the whole color scheme of your scene. And um, actually let's see I'm liking this color scheme much more better than uh, what we had as you can see. This is very nice actually. But uh, now what I wanted to uh, make sure is this uh, color correction I just want to be applied to uh, this cylinder and not this hair element. As you can see if I turn uh, this effect on and off uh, it simply affects all my layers uh, and I just want to be applied to this uh, cylinder. For that matter you can simply uh, use the uh, object buffer element that we have which is this object 3 and use it as a mat to our hue and saturation adjustment layer. So let me uh, put this layer here and now I can go to this layer uh, toggle switch here and uh, make sure in your track mat uh, you use this hue and, hue and saturation effect and this adjustment layer uh, make sure it's using the luma mat now basically uh, this hue and saturation just applied to the white pixel of uh, the above layer so this is what we say this is the mat for our hue and saturation layer and let's name it uh, so mat for CC. There we go. And uh, now this is a good starting point uh, basically. The next thing I think our uh, whole render is too much saturated and uh, let's add another adjustment layer and uh, let's just name it saturation or what we saturation and apply another hue and saturation effect and let's just desaturate it uh, a little bit so now uh, I think this is a bit better you can go to really saturate it it's really up to you I'm just going to stay here. something like here it is I think is enough now in this point I think what we can do is start adding our depth of field so uh, let's add our depth map to our uh, render here uh, there we go here is our depth map I can put it down here and let's uh, rename it to depth map we can actually just unhide the layer hide the layer and again uh, for depth of field effect uh, let's uh, create another adjustment layer make sure you have this composition selected layer new adjustment layer and I'm going to name it I select the layer and depth of field or DOF which stands for depth of field and uh, for depth of field effect I'm going to use a, a plugin called uh, Frischlauf depth of field and let's just type in here FL and uh, this is a very very useful and powerful plugin I really use it a lot so uh, let's apply this plugin to our depth of field map uh, if you have caps lock uh, turned on, in, on your keyboard uh, please turn it off the first thing you need uh, to do when you apply depth of field effect is to define your depth layer. So we have added our depth layer and depth map and let's go to select that layer and uh, let's add a bit more radius. Now uh, as you can see uh, we have a bit of problem because uh, now uh, it's kind of uh, it's uh, the opposite of what we want. We want the if you take a look at the depth map here let me just, uh, as you can see, we have this uh, black pixels, white pixel, gray pixels. Uh, right now, the uh, depth of field effect, if you just uh, take a look here and uh, see the picture here, you can see uh, depth of field effect may, uh, blurs the uh, black pixels. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the white pixels uh, right now are in focus. So we have to... Uh, kind of uh, reverse this behavior so I'm going to my depth of filler and a very simple way to reverse the behavior is 
uh, by uh, clicking on this select depth uh, picker and you can choose uh, what shade of this grayscale value you want the focus to be so about here so let's just click here and uh, pick here there we go now as you can see our depth of field map is uh, right and we have added it very nicely even though the amount is too much let's put something like 10 maybe and okay something like six looks quite nice and uh, there we go you have this very nice effect here and uh, the next thing I want to add a feel of sort of uh, having fog back here so let's do that and uh, for uh, in order to do that really simply you can uh, create a new solid let's make sure we have our composition selected new solid and uh, before doing that let me just get back to where I have this um, okay now let's add a new solid choose a nice color I'm just going to choose from this uh, shade here okay and uh, I'm going to use again this depth of field map and uh, I just want to make sure that this uh, a pale gray royal blue solid here is uh, just being applied in this white pixel so this is why we're going to be, to be using the luma uh, mat and as you can see now uh, the solid layer is just uh, there when the white pixels are here in this uh, above layer so the next thing you need to do just let's uh, decrease the opacity to something like maybe 20 or maybe a bit more 50 there we go now you have this very nice effect and um, this is definitely much more better than what we had uh, earlier and uh, <clears throat> there we go I think it is very nice um, let's me go and add another solid uh, and this solid I'm going to add uh, the optical flare plugin so let's uh, just name it flare and we're going to be using a very dark color here and let's uh, type in uh, optical flare so this is optical flare from video copilot let's add that make sure it's set to screen let's go to the options and go to our presets and in the motion graphics folder you should have a bunch of options this one is very nice I think and uh, we can customize it a bit by adding some uh, elements like something like strict and we can um, let's offset it in y direction Maybe something like this and we can stretch it a bit more as you can see in the X direction something like this I'm going to add another uh, layer again and let's uh, offset it this time to this way and I'm going to stretch it on X and also in here in your now uh, select your main uh, global parameters you got the uh, lens texture let's choose this grainy I think it's very nice for this uh, situation let's hit ok this is definitely too much so let's just put it away and ok and let's go to something like 50 of brightness and let's see mm. let me go to again 100% now before doing anything and adjusting this I wanna just uh, uh, go through and add another solid layer I'm just going to make my uh, render a bit more wider so let's uh, name them black bars and uh, let's uh, alt click on this button here so you have your action title safe and let's uh, just go through and add a uh, two mask to this layer let's go to something 
literally it's up to you i don't really think of uh kind of standard uh pixel and standard amount of these bars just uh try to uh sort of align them with this action title safe lines okay and let's uh go here again and do the same thing for there we go now this will definitely add a lot and I'll click on these guys again I'm just going to select this black bar and add a simple uh, fast blur and double click on it something like one pixel so um, they don't have those sharp edges if I turn it on and off you can see and now I can again go back to my optical flare layer and there we go I think something like this is quite nice and it's a good idea to have a bit of flicker so let's just uh, bit of flicker isn't that bad there we go, uh, we have a very nice uh, render and uh, this is what we started with, let me show you this is what we started with and this is what we uh, have here so a magnificent amount of change as you can see in compositing and we make this really boring image to something really nice there is a lot of room and we can still add a lot but I I don't want to waste your time but by adding different elements uh, so you know the basics and now you can go ahead and start adding different elements and uh, this is really a big amount of change take a look at this render and this one so you can actually delete this so you can see how much of a change there is there is too much isn't it so okay so this is really great uh, and uh, let me have a quick RAM preview and get back uh, so the RAM preview is finished and this is the result that we have it's very very nice and I think uh, it, it is amazing it's very awesome and awesome and there's uh, a lot of room to go there and change different elements and work with it uh, and uh, I think uh, this is just amazing and uh, 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 you can do a lot let me just <laughs> really go and quickly do uh, using our ambient occlusion to doing some sort of abstract look let's just add the uh, ambient occlusion for example in here and uh, in about let's just uh, mask this layer out maybe from here okay and let's take a look at this uh, for example a render like this uh, let me just uh, have a quick RAM preview let's just gonna take a bit of time uh, but you can see really uh, you can go there and change different elements add different elements you can have this ambient occlusion sort of flickering of, or just appear for one or two seconds but uh, take a look at this and uh, this is definitely very nice and you can uh, go there and uh, this simple stuff can really add a lot to your renders if you go uh, a little bit wild it really uh, it's not gonna hurt anybody and it just make your job a bit more uh, really special and different from what other people do so uh, I encourage you and invite you to go uh, and uh, sort of change whatever you think you can change and uh, get different results and uh, let's see what we can do here and uh, there we go you can see uh, what we have here this is very nice a very simple effect and very nice uh, and you can uh, change whatever you want so hopefully uh, you like this uh, tutorial and uh, this uh, series of tutorial in this course and uh, I'll get back to you to a final uh, concluding lesson